and there we go. <laughs> Morning everybody in church um, and online. Welcome to our first ever Worship for All, All Age service. That's a bit of a mouthful um, at St Lawrence's. So this essentially means that the children won't be going out for their own teaching, but they'll be in with us for the whole service. So hopefully we're going to have lots going on to engage them. As usual, though, we still have our crash room over there for the younger children, which might have a nice little surprise um, for them in there. Um, if you could make sure, though, that if children are in there, they have an adult who accompanies them. Um, and then we've also got the area at the back where there are some toys and um, colouring and some other things for them to do. If you are watching online, I would just like to point out that later on in the service we're going to be sharing bread and wine um, and we would love for you to join in with this. So if you would like to just make a quick run to your kitchen and grab some things that you could share with us then um, you will be all ready for later. We're going to start this morning with our prayer for Ukraine. Um, Benjamin, do you think you and your mum could come and light the candles for Ukraine please? Thank you. Um, and after we have done that, I am going to... It's that one there. Do we have any matches? Um, so when we have prayed for the Ukraine, I'm going to hand over to Mark, who is going to lead us in worship this morning. Holy and gracious God, we light a candle and lift the people of the Ukraine, the people of Russia and their leaders before you, hope of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We light a candle and ask you to stretch out your hand of justice, that evil might be overcome by goodness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We light a candle and pray for peace for Ukraine. Asking for the light of your love to shine in the present darkness. We ask this in the name of your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Bring, Bring us, us your, your peace. peace. Amen. If you'd like to stand if you're able. And as we go through the, the worship today, Feel free to use the space if the children want to come to forward to the front. Absolutely fine. So let's just offer up our praise. And ask God's Spirit to be with us this morning, both here and online. Turn to you. Oh, this stern hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Praise is rising, praise is rising. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Oh, is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away. Hose you are the God who saves us Worthy of all your praises Hosanna, Hosanna Come out your way among us We welcome you here, Lord Jesus Hear the sound 
Hosanna. God has blessed you and raised his blessed name to the heavens. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your street of abundance flow blessed be your name blessed be your name when I'm found in that desert place though I walk through the wilderness blessed be your name every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun is shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away.
So there's a little bit of a clue on the screen, actually. But this morning is our new series about gifts. And I was wondering if any of the children have watched a film recently where there are some people who have some gifts. Abel's nodding. Abel, what film is it? Encanto. That's right. So for those of you who haven't seen Encanto, we are going to watch the trailer just so you are going to get a little flavour of what the film is about. I gave you the special since you're the only Madrigal kid with no gift. I call it the not special special since, uh, you have no gift. Uh, thanks? Gift or no gift? I am just as special as the rest of my family. Who wants more pink? All right, guys, where do I drop the wagon? Maybe your gift is being in denial. <sighs> so, Encanto is a really, really great film. It was released by Disney in the UK at the end of last year. Um, the music and lyrics are amazing. It was. They were written by Lynn manuel Miranda, as you saw on that trailer, who also wrote um, the very famous and critically acclaimed film, Ham um, sorry, musical Hamilton. So Encanto is about a family, the Madrigal family. Abuela is the grandmother, is the matriarch of the family. And she has triplets, and then they have their own children. And the family all live together in a casita in a village in the mountains of Colombia. And all the members of the family, apart from one, Mirabel, have a gift, which is given to them by a supernatural power, which is represented in the film as a candle that never goes out. And so the film follows Mirabel's journey as she digs a little deeper into the gifts of her family members, and ultimately she discovers her own gift. And just like the Madrigal family have been given gifts, we have all been given gifts too by God. It says in Romans 12 verses 6 to 8, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, then do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. And so, I just want you to have a little think for a minute about what gifts God has given you. It could be glaringly obvious. Your gift could be painting, it could be playing the piano, or it could be prophecy, like Bruno. But we don't talk about Bruno. It could be something not specifically related to church. No matter how big or how small you are, God still gives you gifts. It could be that you're fantastic at colouring in, or you have an amazing smile that can light up a room. Now, you might have noticed when you came in the fantastic new piece of artwork at the back that the art team had put together last week. Um, it was inspired by some lines from one of the songs in Encanto used by Mirabel to describe her family. We're all stars and everyone gets a chance to shine. So I thought it would be fantastic to see all the gifts that we have in the room.
Rivers team all shining together. So everybody should have a star. I scattered them about um, before some of you were here. If you don't have one, there are a few piles of them around. Um, if you can't find one anywhere, then um, pop your hand up and somebody will um, bring you one. Um, so what I would like you to do is to write your gift on a star and then we are going to stick them onto the sky. Um, Julie has got some blue tack at the back so when you have written your gift if you feel comfortable doing so, if you um, want to make your way to the back and stick it on, if you don't want to stand up then um, if you pop your hand up and one of the children will come round and collect your star and stick it on for you. Um, and because God gives us all gifts. There's no excuse for not joining in. Everybody has been given gifts. Um, and if you are watching online and you would like um, your gift added to the picture, if you just pop it in the comments, and one of us will um, pick it up and um, make sure that you end up on the wall as well. Thank you.
My God is mighty to save 
like to take a deep breath. It's amazing to look back there at all the range of gifts that we have all been given by God. And let's not be mistaken, they are from God. It says in James 1, verse 17, that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly light. I love the image that that verse paints. It's a little bit like the one that we've created this morning. However, God's gifts come with a caveat. In Romans 12, verse 3, Paul says, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. I'm going to read Romans 12 verses 5 to 8 again, but this time from the message version of the Bible. When I read it before, it was from the NIV. So from the message. Let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't. If you preach, just preach God's message, nothing else. If you help, just help, don't take over. If you teach, stick to your teaching. If you give encouraging guidance, be careful that you don't get bossy. If you're put in charge, don't manipulate. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. If you work with the disadvantaged, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. God didn't give us gifts to make us better than everyone else, to make us somehow superior. In Encanto, the characters who do have gifts are treated a bit like celebrities, and because of that, they have a huge amount of pressure put on them by others, but also by themselves. It says in Galatians 6, verses 3 and 4, If anyone thinks he is important when he is really not important, he is only fooling himself. He should not compare himself with others. Each person should judge his own actions. Then he can be proud for what he himself has done. So God doesn't give us gifts to bless us personally, to make us important. Your gift wasn't even given to you by God for you. It was given to you for us, for this body of Christ, this church. And so it's really important that your gift doesn't form part of your identity. It shouldn't be tied in. It shouldn't be woven together with coming to church. Because although you should all be proud of your gifts, you were worth so much more than your gift, both in God's eyes and here in the Rivers team. You aren't just a person who comes in and does a job on a Sunday morning or in the week. You're a friend, you're a confidant, you're a support, you're a brother, sister, a parent or a child in our family, in our Rivers team family. And that is despite your gift, not because of it. In Romans, Paul tells us to be humble in our gift. And there's no better example in all of history of humility than Jesus. Jesus, being God, he'd got amazing gifts. He could raise the dead, he could heal the sick, he could make the blind see, and most important of all, he could turn water into wine. I'm joking. <laughs> but he never boasted. He was never big-headed. He never gave the disciples any attitude. He never got impatient with their ability, inability to fully grasp what was going on right in front of their eyes. At the Last Supper, Jesus carried out an act of ultimate humility. He washed the disciples' feet. When he had finished, John 13, verses 13 to 17, says that he said to his disciples, You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, 
nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. During that same meal, Jesus took some bread. He thanked God for it and broke it. Then he gave it to his followers and said, Take this bread and eat it. This is my body. Then Jesus took a cup. He thanked God for it and gave it to his the followers. He said, Every one of you drink this. This is my blood, which begins the new agreement that God makes with his people. This blood is poured out for many to forgive their sins. And so, like Jesus told us to, we're going to share in bread and wine together. We're going to do this family style, and so we're going to serve one another rather than one or two people serving us all. So we're going to hand out some bowls. In the bowls, we have got um, wafers and fruit shoot and then little individual cups so you can make your own portions of wine. And so as you share together, Remember Jesus' humility and the ultimate sacrifice that he made for us when he died on the cross and came back to life so all the things that we do wrong can be forgiven. Scars and strokes 
struggles on the way But with joy our hearts can say Yes, our hearts can say Never once did we
song just to finish this block and I might need the children out of the front here because this definitely needs rising up because we're all free in our Father we've all got our gifts to express so feel free to worship and come and that includes everybody else Forgiven, singing redemption song. There's a fire that burns inside. There's a fire that burns inside. Nothing can stop us. We'll be running through the night with a fire that burns inside. A fire that burns inside. We are the free, the freedom generation. Singing of mercy, you are the one who set us in emotion. Yours is the glory. There's a fire in our hearts and it burns for you. It's never gonna fade away. We are the free and yours is the glory. the risen looking alive in you and the passion will not die and the passion will not die nothing can stop us we'll be running through the night and the passion will not die and the passion will not die we are the free the freedom generation Singing of mercy, you are the one who set us in emotion. Yours is the glory. There's a fire in our hearts and it burns for you. It's never gonna fade away. We are the free, and yours is the glory. again up from the grave you rose and we will rise up rise up into the world that you so love into the world we go and we will rise up rise up and we will the freedom generation singing of mercy you are the one who set us in emotion yours is the glory there's a fire in our hearts and it burns for you it's never gonna fade away we are the free and yours is the glory oh, 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 oh. yours is the glory oh, oh. Take your seats. <laughs> Throughout Encanto, we see the Madrigal family trying to deal with the repercussions of their family not working together. They're all trying to shine, but yet their self importance means that their motivation is selfish, and this causes at first 
cracks to appear, but ends up with the whole casita in ruins and all the family fighting. And it takes rebuilding from those ruins for them to realize that family is the most important thing. And if they all shine in the same direction and use their gifts to serve one another instead of serving themselves, then the light that is shining is brighter than if they were all shining in different directions. In the Romans reading this morning, Paul makes a very similar point when he says in verses 3 and 4, each one of us has a body, and that body has many parts. These parts all have different uses. In the same way, we are many, but in Christ we are all one body. Each one is a part of that body, and each part belongs to all other parts. We, here today and online, are a body, a family, just like the Madrigals. And in God's eyes, we are all stars, and we all shine. But actually, Stars don't shine, they burn. And our stars can burn out. And if this is done in a healthy way, then that is great. If we're raising up new people to do something that we, we are doing, or if we're obeying God when he says it's time to move on. But sometimes we can burn out in church. We can burn out doing our part in our body because some people sit back and let others take on lots of things. Sometimes the line between a gift and a call can get a bit blurred. God gives us all specific gifts, areas in which we excel. And we sometimes wait, waiting for a call from God for us to use these specific gifts in a specific way. Or we might wait to be asked by the vicar. But actually, God calls us all to be a living sacrifice. Paul says in the first few verses of today's reading, So brothers, since God has shown us great mercy, I beg you to offer your lives as a living sacrifice to him. Your offering must be only for God and pleasing to him. This is the spiritual way for you to worship. Do not be shaped by this world. Instead, be changed within by a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to decide what God wants for you, and you will be able to know what is good and pleasing to God and what is perfect. Being a living sacrifice means to be available and willing to be obedient to God, whatever he commands, to live every minute of every day as an offering and in service to God. And that is radically against our culture, especially in this area of hashtag self-care, Society's expectation is that we put ourselves first, that we're selfish, that we make our own needs and wants a priority. But Paul is telling us to put God, and therefore his church's needs, above our own, to be selfish for God and sacrifice our own desires. Many people in the team are making these sacrifices, but yet there are still things not getting done, and there are people overwhelmed and burning out. So if God has blessed you with the gift of making a really good cup of tea or being able to run a hoover around or baking or you can use a computer or anything else that can serve the body of the church and you have the capacity, then I urge you to make the sacrifice for God and put your desires aside. Even if you have gifts and you've got no idea how you could use them, then talk to one of us and we'll pray that God will show us a way. In one of our family's favorite sitcoms, The Middle, the lead character has got a saying, you do for family. Meaning, even if it is the last thing you want to do, you do it because you're a family. You always come through for each other. We, here today and online, are a family, the Rivers team family, just like the Madrigals, and we'll shine brightest for God if we work together as one body, with each piece playing their part. Like Paul says, it's pleasing to God, and that can only be a good thing. So, to symbolize our Rivers team family, 
and our resolve to work together. You should have a tag with a bit of string on the top um, with a frame. And so what we'd like you to do is to draw a self-portrait on the tag and then hang it on our Rivers Team family tree. It's not a hierarchical tree. If you're at the top, you're not more important than the people at the bottom. It's just going to show that we all play a part and we're all there together. So if you don't have a tag, then Laura is coming around with some spares. Um, and she's also got felt tips. There's no pressure to make your drawing artistically brilliant. You can just write your name or draw a stick figure if you'd like. And as before, if anyone online would like to be included, then drop us a comment. And we've got a uh, queue of budding artists who are raring to go to draw your self-portrait for you and we'll hang you on the tree.
of his mercy like to stand if you can. Oh, who are we? Come to the fountain. Dip your heart in the stream of life. Let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of his mercy.
you'd like to take your seats. Do you like to have the gifts of healing and hospitality? God, I hear well, Thank you for all those who share your gift of healing. Doctors and nurses and all who care for the sick, we pray for those who need your healing today. Finally, by the people who touch food for us, may we always be ready to welcome others to share at our table. We pray for the hungry and those who don't have food to share. Teach us to be generous with what we have. Amen. Isabella, brighten up our world by creating beautiful flowers of all shapes and sizes and colours. To God, help us all to um, care for the beautiful. Lord, would world you have made and thank you for those Brighten, brighten up our lives, 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 and our worship by using their creative gift skits. Amen. The Lord has the gift of hearing. Help us to listen also that we are sensitive to what is being said and to listen to your holy food so we know that you are staying and saying to us and receive understood about what might not be being, being said on them. Mirabelle seemed to be the only one that had a supernatural gift, but she had faith and love, which makes her the true hero of the film. Mighty God, make our faith stronger and help us love you and everyone else more and more, and make us grow stronger in our esteemed family. In Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, if you'd like to stand, we're going to sing our last worship this morning my lighthouse i definitely definitely need the children to help me with this one feel free feel free to come this way because there's lots of grown-ups so you could inspire as well so you don't have to hide down there come this way i'll be singing as well In my doubts, in 
You are the peace that my trouble see in the silence. You won't let go in the questions that you know. Another love will lead me through. You are the peace in my trouble sea. Oh, oh, oh. You are the peace in my trouble sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, I won't fail. Tomorrow bring with each morning I sighs and sing. My best love will lead me through. You are the peace in my trouble sea. Oh, oh. You are the peace in my trouble sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will just promise, you will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, fire, fire before us. You're the brightness, you will lead us through the storm. Fire before us, you're the brightness, you will lead us through the storm. Fire before us, you're the brightness, you will lead us through the storm. Fire before us, you're the brightness, you will lead us storm my lighthouse my lighthouse shining in the darkness I will follow you my lighthouse my lighthouse I will trust the promise I will carry me safe to shore safe to shore Once more, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore. So in a moment we're going to be closing our online service and we'll share together in the words of the piece. Uh, but I want to thank everybody who's worked so hard to make this morning come together. Um, and I particularly want to thank Nick, whose vision this was, whose idea this was, um, and for the way that she's taken it and run with it. And I, I know Nick is very humble and wouldn't look for a round of applause, but I think she deserves one. <laughs> So, who are the body of Christ? We are the body of Christ.
We're all baptised by one Spirit. Let us pursue then all that makes for peace and builds up the common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So if you'd like to turn and face the camera if you're able and just share the peace with our online family and friends. The peace of the Lord be always with you too. I have some bands of marriage. <laughs>